All right, we're gonna have a little skit, so we have to set up. So while we're setting up, I want you to talk to the person next to you, and I want you to say, if one thing could happen to you that would change your life, what would it be? And for those of you who are super spiritual that are say, I already have it, I have Jesus, I want you to think of something else, because that is true, but think of something else. Okay, go. This went a lot faster in practice. Okay, I'm ready. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to The Price is Right. I'm Bill Meower and I'm glad to be here with you today. Hey, Mr. Dixon, who are our next contestants on The Price is Right? I took your mic. Oh, you took my mic? Oh. Bye, Mr. Dixon. Bye-bye. Is it even on? Kelly Prejean. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Come on down. You got to do it again. They cheer too loud. What? Sam Thompson, come on down. Yeah! Woo! Come on down, guys! Kelly Prejean, come on down. Yeah! Woo! All right. Justine Thompson! All right, guys, you're over here. Ladies, you're over here. The price is right. All right, so today I need a fake mic. Today I am glad to introduce you our first. Oh, let's introduce ourselves. What's your name? Justine, thank you. All right, and Leanna, and here we have. Kelly and Thad, that's wonderful. We're glad to have you here. Our first competition, or our first quiz is this. We're doing easy as one, two, three. Anybody know easy as one, two, three? It's quite easy. Like one, two, three, that's right. You're gonna take these products and you're gonna put them in order, lowest to highest. And so, Mr. Dixon, would you please introduce the products today? Our first product is a flexible faucet coupler. Are you afraid of a third winter happening? Have no fear with this flexible faucet cover. Duck products guaranteed. This product will keep your faucet freeze free down to 33 degrees. Our second product is an aquaculture three inch fishing net. Do you have fishing plans with Jeremy? Have no fear, this is the only net you need. It's guaranteed to hold up to 10 ounces. <laughs> Our final product is the Ozark Trail Inflatable Pool Noodle. <laughs> w included with a safety valve. Do you need help swimming in the deep section of the pool like Jeremy? This is the answer for you. This inflatable pool noodle is perfect to assist you to stay afloat, and it can also double as a pillow. 
yes, this noodle is guaranteed to hold air and stay inflated until it is used. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Mr. Dixon. So what we're going to do is each one of you are going to get one of these products. You have to decide which one was cheapest. Now here's the little surprise. All three of these were found at Walmart and Ladysmith clearance aisle. So you have to guess what the clearance price is, which one was cheapest. All right, so let's give a little music to give them a little to decide. Oh, uh, time's up, all right. All right, so we're gonna go with mo most expensive. We can stop with the music. I'm getting busy. All right, so which one would be the least ex or most expensive that you guys think? This is your most expensive one, so we'll put the most expensive ones over here. Which one is your most expensive one? We call that the copycat move. All right, <laughs> excellent, all right. So which one would be your, oh, you guys got to start, so you can't copycat. Which one is your middle one? Oh, yes. Guaranteed down to 33 degrees. All right, what are you guys going to do? <laughs> All right. Interesting conversations when you go home tonight. All right. All right. Just give me those. I already know your answer. Oh, you change your mind? All right. Yeah. All right, all right, so here we have my fishing net. And then for the lowest, you have the flexible cover and the, my fishing net. All right, well, shall we find out what happens? We will start out over here. What do we have? The price is inflatable noodle, $2. Now, is that gonna go lower or higher? Neither do I. We'll find out. Hopefully these are right. All right, what's the next one? <laughs> Fishing net, a dollar eighty. And we have the faucet cover for a dollar fifty. The men get it right. Congratulations, because of your success, you guys win these three prizes. And the consolation prize is the same prizes. Congratulations, you just played a game on the Price is Right. Hey, what do you think you're doing here? Oh, I'm doing it my time slot, get oh, out of here. Oh, man. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Alex's brother, and <laughs> today we will be uh, playing Jeopardy, the only game show where we give you the answers, you give us the questions. Remember, every, every answer must be given in the form of a question. Uh, since you guys won, you have the board first. Uh, please choose any of those. Oh, that's a great choice. <laughs> Feel free to browse in whenever. <laughs> All right, that's you, I bet. Yep, you're glowing. I have a question. Uh, who rose from the dead? <laughs> who is Jesus? By the way, you're keeping track of your own points. <laughs> you get to choose next. The resurrection for 400. Was that the resurrection for 200? <laughs> Perfect, the resurrection for 200. <laughs> Who did Mary think was the gardener near the tomb? That's you. Who is Jesus? 
Correct. <laughs> Since you answered correctly, you get the board. Uh, the resurrection for 500? I believe you just said the resurrection for 300. <laughs> Who, who had to show his scars to Thomas to remove doubt of his resurrection? It was Jesus. Correct! <laughs> Since you got it correct, you get the board. Uh, resurrection for 400, please. Resurrection for 400. <laughs> I didn't get the question yet. All right. Who was not there when the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is Jesus? <laughs> Correct! <laughs> <laughs> and our final question on the board. The resurrection for 500. That's right, the resurrection for 500. <laughs> uh, Who died and rose from the grave to pioneer the way for the, for who follows him to be able to do the same thing? Who is Jesus? That's correct! <laughs> and that brings us to our daily double. Do you have the daily double slide? No? Okay. And our daily double today is... Final Jeopardy! Or yeah, Final Jeopardy! That's right, not the daily double, that's a different one. Our final Jeopardy today is, uh, Jeremy, you got that one? <laughs> the topic is game shows, and the button on the PowerPoint is in the upper right hand of the board. <laughs> and the next slide is the question. There it is, our final Jeopardy. Topic today is game shows. How is this game show going to change your life? And so we know what your answers are. You can write your answers right here. You, you don't have to hold the buses for me. I'll take the buses back. There you go. And how much you're going to wager. There you go. A little music, please. <laughs> do we do another round, or you guys got it here? Okay, another one. Do 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 You got it now? Okay, let's take a look at these answers. Let's start over here. What do you got? For $100, who is Jesus? And for $200, I will be late for lunch. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> and here we have, for $200, a lot. <laughs> and finally, Immensely for $200. <laughs> Wonderful. And do we have an answer? It won't. <laughs> Jeremy, can you tell them what today's prizes are? Well, to our winners, you br win a brand new car. Yes, a brand new Tesla Model 3 is yours due to your depth skills or just plain old luck. 
This car is perfect for carpooling to work and has a unique electric propulsion that is based upon an organic electrical occurrence of the human body within your body's nervous system. What does that mean? You'll never have to pay for electricity. The value of this car, if it was life-size, is over $38,900. I think you guys are going to have to carpool or something. <laughs> we only got one, so... And our consolation prize today. And our consolation prize is a specially curated collection of high quality chocolates using unique miniature sized packaging so you can enjoy the time spent unwrapping more than the actual time eating the chocolate. <laughs> it also comes with an easy to use clear carrying bag so you can be tempted for the whole remainder of our church service. <laughs> enjoy and remember, life doesn't have to be filled with jeopardy if you get the price of life right. Congratulations. Good job. You guys can go down. What? Oh, you can leave that up there for me. That'll be my sermon notes for today. Thank you. I'll be late for lunch. For those of you are third grade and under, if you want to go downstairs for Children's Church, you're more than welcome to go downstairs for that. They're fake. <laughs> so why did we just do all that? The reason why we did all of that, it actually has a purpose besides laughter. The purpose is so many of us are in a situation where we just wish we could resurrect hope. We wish somehow hope would come alive because we're in a situation that's difficult and it's hard. You see, oftentimes with game shows, what happens is we try to find a way to get ahead. You know, the game show, the lottery, whatever it is, it's I'm going to go to this and I'm going to try by my skill, by my knowledge, or by my luck to get ahead somehow. Maybe it's a dollar, maybe it's an amount, maybe it's an opportunity, but you just hope that somehow you're going to get ahead. And so you try those quick hits, trying to get ahead. But the problem is, it doesn't work like you want it to, does it? Getting ahead, I'm just going to work harder. I'm going to be more focused. I'm going to rearrange my priorities. I'm going to just get my brain to think harder, my eyes to focus better, my body to move faster. And we think if we just work harder and put more effort into it, we're going to get ahead. But I don't know about you, but I have found that it doesn't necessarily help me out. There are times where it just gets messed up. So then, how do we fix license? Get ahead doesn't always work. Then we try to get away. We try to get away from the problem. We try to isolate ourselves. We try to just, I don't want to deal with it anymore. And so we get away from that, and we try to distract ourselves. We distract ourselves with our social life. We distract ourselves with our social media. We distract ourselves by buying things or by making something that just makes us feel good in the moment. We try to get ahead, that doesn't work, then we try to get away from the problem and we just push it off. But that doesn't fix anything, it just makes you feel good for a moment, right? And when that doesn't work, we just give up. We just get to the point where we just are like, what's the point? And when we get to that point, that's when we hit the point of hopelessness. What's the point? It's just going to all come crashing down anyway. It's just going to be hard. It's going to be unfair. I'm not going to get ahead. I'm not going to get my break. I've given up. I've tried. I'm at the end of my rope. I have no hope. You know, hopelessness is probably one of the worst places you can be because that means you literally think there is no future. There's no way that it can get better, and that dark hole gets darker the more you dwell within it, and all of a sudden you realize that, oh, it's just not worth it. You see, 
So often we think we can just get ahead. We can make it better. And we wonder how we can move past it. Is it worth the fight? Is it worth the struggle? Is it worth more effort? Because I'm trying and I'm not getting ahead. I don't know what situation that might be for you. It might be within a relationship. You're about had it. It might be with your finances. That bill just knocked you to your knees. It might be that boss that's overwhelming and micromanaging you. Or it might be a coworker that just won't leave you alone. Or it might be just not being valued wherever you're at. It might be a struggle with your family or with your neighbor, whatever it might be. You're just trying to move past the situation that just seems to have its grips on you. And you're like, what do I do? And you just want to throw your hands up in the air. See, game shows are fun. But after you go home from the game show, you have to pay taxes. You have to realize that that 25, that 50, that 100, that $200,000 you thought would be life changing, but it just got you out of debt and then you bought something that put you back in debt. It's short, it's temporary, but that's not necessarily what God has for us. So, do we move past it? Do we fight? Do we work harder? Do we try to get more? I believe the answer is no. I believe the answer is no because. What's really going on is something we can't fix. Wayne Rice writes about this episode in his life when there is, he was sitting in his chair in a recliner watching TV and his young son, about three and a half, four, said, Daddy, can I get you a glass of milk with some cookies? And he thought, oh, that'd be just wonderful. I would... That would be really nice of you. So here he goes. He scuttles into, into the kitchen, and he, and he goes, and he grabs a stool from underneath the counter, and he, he drags it over to the other part of the counter. He climbs up on top. He gets on his knees, and he reaches, and he reaches way out and grabs a cookie jar, and he brings it close. Then he takes the top off, and he takes a cookie out, eats it, and then he goes back in and takes another cookie, and he puts a little plate of cookies together. He's so proud. He's so excited to be helping his daddy out. And so he puts a plate of cookies there, and he puts the top on, and he pushes it all the way back. And then what does he do after that? He then goes to the fridge, and he gets the glass out of the cupboard. I'm sorry. He got the glass out of the cupboard. He put it on. He wanted a nice big glass for daddy. Put the glass on the counter. He went to the fridge. He went down. And the fridge had that, like, vacuum thing. So he, he's like, his hand is on it, and he's, like, pulling as much as he can, and it pops open, and he gets the milk that's in the door. He reaches up to the milk and he realizes it's a full gallon. He's like, oh, and it's above his head. So he's, he's trying to get it and he gets it just over the lip. And it just kind of tilts toward it and he grabs it and I go boom, right on the, right on the floor. And, and, and the father's like, are you okay in there? Everything okay? I, I got it, Dad. I, everything's just fine. I got it all taken care of. And so he picks up that gallon jug and he heaves it onto the stool, then he climbs up the stool, then he heaves it onto the counter and gets it onto the counter. Ah, this is going to be a good glass of milk. He opens it up, and he takes it, and he picks it up, and he tilts it, and he goes so fast that it misses the cup and goes over and goes all over the counter. So he puts it back down, he goes get a, and he gets, he gets a towel, and he tries wiping it up, but three and a half year old wiping up. Yeah, so... He's like, okay, this time I'm going to do it. So he picks it up, and he doesn't want to spill, so he sets the front of the big jug on the edge of the cup. And as he... How do you know what's going to happen? <laughs> so as he's starting to put it into the cup, as it gets spilled up, he's like, oh, this is going to be really good. And all of a sudden, it falls, and it goes, psh, and the gallon jug falls from the counter onto the ground, and all of a sudden you hear the <laughs> sound going out, right? And as that's going out, he runs down, and he scurries, he picks it up, he puts it up, and Dad's going, are you okay in there? I'm just fine, Dad. Now the jug is empty enough, so he takes the glass off the counter, 
He puts it down onto the floor. And he has a half-empty gallon. So he just picks it up and pours it. And he grabs that cup. And he grabs the plate of milk-sprayed soaked cookies. And his cup of milk inside and dripping on the outside. To his dad said, here, dad. Here's your cookies and milk. And the father just says, thank you. In the Bible, that is the story of how good we are at messing things up. And in Genesis 1, everything was just fine. Just gave Adam and Eve a simple rule. Just, you can eat anything, just don't eat that tree. They eat. And from there on, we see this decline of morality, this decline of choosing what is right, all the way till we, till we get to the part where Noah is selected to save humanity because God's like, I can't have this wickedness. There has to be judgment. And so he has to wipe the world clean and start over because humanity, when we get to choose our own choices, always chooses wrong. So why can't we move past it? Why doesn't the effort work? Because the effort doesn't work because we're too good at spilling milk when it comes to our life. We try to fix this relationship and it blows up on us. We try to do extra work at, for our boss and it blows up on us. We try to be nice when we've already done something and it blows up on us. We try to fix things and it goes backwards on us. Why? Because we can't fix things. But there's not, that doesn't mean there's a reason for hopelessness. You see, Jesus came for that purpose, to help us realize that there's a way that we don't have to spill milk all the time. He says this in Mark chapter 1, or chapter 2, verses 17. He says, it is not the healthy who needs the doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call on the goody two-shoes, the people that got it all together, the people that don't have any problems, the people that think they're better than others. That's what that righteous part means. But I've come for the sinners, the people that make mistakes, the people that don't think there's any hope, the people that think that they can't fix it. I came for them, which is why today we can start thinking about how Jesus can resurrect a hope inside of us that we've forgotten is there. Because let's be honest, we've given up on some things, given up on our culture maybe on a relationship, on a job, on a friend. Think about the people you've given up on. Think about the circumstances you've given up on. It's like, I'm done. I want you to know, because Jesus rose from the grave, we can resurrect that hope to where we can have light, where we can look at the future and not be overwhelmed with this feeling of failure because Jesus died. We're going to be looking at the scripture that dad uh, read today. And I just want to make two simple points for us today so we can understand how we can start resurrecting hope in your life today. The first one is just simply this, understanding what the resurrection means. If we understand why Jesus rose from the grave, if we understand what that act alone, that Jesus did not stay in the tomb, what does that mean for you and I now? Not just Mary and Peter and the disciples back then. But what does that mean for us now? We can understand this. Hope is here even when we don't expect it. Hope is here. If you go back to John chapter 20, starting verse 11, it says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, now who is Mary? This is Mary Magdalene. This isn't Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene is believed to have seven demons that were in her. Jesus came and freed her from those demons. As he freed her from those demons, she started following Jesus and was so loyal. Because he was her hope. And she comes to the grave hopeless. You see, you have to understand, all the disciples and all these followers, they had left everything to follow Jesus. Everything. Peter left his family so he could learn underneath Jesus. James and John, they left their dad to do the fishing business while they went and followed Jesus. Matthew had a promising tax collecting gig going on, and he just up and left. 
because he hated the feeling of doing a job that just didn't seem honorable. And he gave that up to follow Jesus. And all these others, they follow Jesus saying, Jesus, you're a hope. You're the one that's going to help us because I see your power through the miracles. I see your words of truth. They just bring light to me. Understand like, oh, it's so simple, but it's so real. And they had invested, some of them, up to three and a half years to that moment. And then they come into Jerusalem the week before, and they're like, wow. Finally, people recognize how special he is in the capital city. And five days later, he's on the cross taking his last breath. And they're like, what just happened? What happened? Our trajectory was going up and to the right, exactly what you want to happen, and all of a sudden just drops off. You're like, what? What do I do now? Was it a waste? And they're trying to gather the pieces through their grief and their disappointment and their frustration. And just like, I thought we had something. And that's the feeling Mary had as she stood outside the tomb crying. Because it says, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated there where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned toward him, cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Now, I want you to see something here. She's crying out of grief the first time she's coming to the tomb of a beloved person. Emotionally. And she steps into the tomb. The tomb's rolled away, so she knows that something has happened to the tomb. Somebody's manipulated it. Somebody has done something. And they're thinking, who would ever mess with a person's tomb? And she sees that there is no body laying there where they were put. She sees two angels, and it doesn't even register. Jesus stands in front of her. It doesn't even register. And you know why it doesn't register? Because there was no other story except for her hopelessness. We do those stories all the time. There's no way this will ever be healed. There's no way this can ever be fixed. There's no way that we can ever get by this. There's no way that this can happen. And we tell ourselves these stories that ignore the power of the resurrection and accept the hopelessness and that Jesus can do nothing for you in the moment. We accept these stories all the time. We like to call it nice words like cynicism, negativity, or we brag about being a cup half empty type of person. And when we say words that are always negative without any recognition of God's power, what we're doing is like, God, I really don't believe you're that powerful. That's where Mary was, because Jesus was dead. That's not going to happen. I mean, she heard about how Jesus had raised Lazarus and, and the widow's son and, and, and the daughter and all that. She heard, but this is different. Jesus isn't around to raise people up. He's not that powerful. What about your stories? What about the stories that you've told, your, told yourself have you told yourself that there's no way I can get out of this financial situation? Is there no way that I can get past this medical situation? Is there no way that I can get past the stress, this past, this regret, this shame, this relationship, this marriage, this friend, this family, this neighbor, this coworker, this boss, this dog? You know what I'm saying? 
and we tell ourselves these stories and we ignore the fact that there's two angels. Okay. In my mind, the angels are like glowing at the end of the bed. Now, we don't know that. That's in all the pictures, so we know that they're angels. But I'm going to adopt that because it's like she didn't see glowing people. And she didn't recognize the man that she had given her life to in loyalty because of the story she told herself. Have you ever had someone try to tell you a different story than the one that you believed? If you do this, we can work through this. Do you know what Jesus has done? Do you understand God's power? If you just open up and talk about it, maybe we can get ahead on some things. Do you realize that if you do it Jesus' way, that it can work? You've heard stories so many times that things can improve, but you have disregarded them. Why? Because you think it's hopeless and it's helpless and we're just going to toss it to the side. And the reality is, you're ignoring that Jesus rose from the grave. You see, I want you to know, by Jesus raising from the grave, it tells us that hope is here. And he's not just here for Mary and the disciples. He's here for you because what do we find? We find Jesus saying this in Revelation 3.20. When it comes to your story of how you are dealing with the stuff in your life, he says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and day with me. I will share life with them and I will give you hope and we will get through this together. And the only reason we know that can happen is because Jesus is still alive. He's not stuck in a tomb. And he has the power to overcome death. And if he has the power to overcome death, will he not have the power to overcome your helpless, hopeless situation? The second thing that the resurrection means is the resurrection means victory is now. It means victory is now. You don't have to wait for Jesus to come back. Victory is now. What we find here is in verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? All he's saying here in this section is this. This is right before he raises Lazarus a couple weeks prior. I got this. You want life without the hopelessness and helplessness, without the struggle and the fight, without the regret and the shame, without the feeling of getting away or giving up or getting ahead, Jesus says, I'm that person. I'll walk through this life. I will eat with you. And guess what? If you want to live and later on and it also, he also says, I want to give you good life, abundant life. And I can do that because I am the resurrection. I have the power to come into your situation and give life to it, breath to it, renew it, and help it if you let me. Because the key word in here is, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is a Christ? Do you believe that he's a son of God? Do you believe that he died and rose again, showing us that not only did he love us to the point of dying for our messy world where we spill milk everywhere, but he rose again telling us that he has power to overcome your yuck and your difficulties? Do you believe that? Then you simply have to figure out how to fix life. How do we fix life? Not trying to get ahead not trying to get away, not giving up. We fix life, or actually we get life, is when we surrender and follow the living, victorious Jesus. If you want to find out how we get ahead in life, how you can get away from your struggles, how you don't have to give up, actually you do have to give up, you have to give up your life to Jesus. And let him be your Lord, your life leader, the one that directs you. When he says, love this person, you love this person. When he says, help this person, help this person. When he says, I want you to 
be kind to others. I want you to be patient. I want you to just wait and show some self-control here. When he asks you to do that, we don't do it because we want to. We do it because we've surrendered ourselves and follow him. Why? Because that's where you find the life that you want. And that's where you can resurrect your hope. So, do you believe this? If you believe this, then you have to surrender. Make Jesus your Lord. If you've never made Jesus your Lord of your life, here's your opportunity. The game show isn't going to work. The lottery ticket's not going to work. The trip to that substance that gives you relief, whatever it might be, it's not going to fix your problem. Being mean to that person, ignoring that person, doing whatever you do to that person to try to get away from that problem, it's not going to work. Ignoring your bills and not owning up to your responsibility, and that's not going to get you through it. But Jesus will if you let him lead and you surrender and you follow. Is it, for, is it time for you to consider following Jesus? Because he wants to give you victory now over your problems, but he also has said, if you want to go to heaven, I must be your Lord. There's no exception your good pile means nothing because you're really good at spilling milk like me. Jesus is the only way to have victory now. And Jesus is your only way to get to heaven. So, I go with Jesus' words. Do you believe this? And if you do, accept him as your Lord recommit yourself to him and follow him. And if you do not, keep asking questions. Jesus loves questions. He wants you to make a good decision. And he can take your questions. I don't know where you're all at today, but Jesus invites you at the door and says, I'm here to give you some hope. If you want it, it's time to invite him in as Lord. And if you haven't United with him in baptism, I invite you to seriously consider being baptized, getting dunked into the water, into him. As he and the water envelops around you, God's grace and his power and his spirit embrace you in that moment. And there's a special union that happens that I can't really understand. But I want to encourage you to consider because that's the only way to resurrect Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We're so thankful because you're so amazing. Thank you for giving us laughter and fun. Thank you for giving us family and friends. Thank you for giving us just a place where we can come together. And God, we just thank you most of all for the empty tomb, helping us realize that we don't have to stick in our yuck forever, but that you will give us hope as we open the door to you. So, Lord, if there are those here that are feeling the need to respond to you, Lord, may they be bold and courageous and step forward in doing that so that they can have the hope that you want them to have. And, Lord, if we know that hope, Lord, may we boldly share it so that everyone can have the hope that you offer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.